Do you think we'll be seeing some TV in, in theaters, TV shows? <sighs> I mean, you look at some of the films, uh, Sex and the City, Entourage, um, Downton Abbey. I, I think the danger with seeing TV shows in movies is that you're limiting your audience right off the bat. So when you have a show such as Downton Abbey, I never watched the show. I haven't seen one or two of the movies because I'm not, I don't know anything about Downton Abbey. So I understand people say you don't have to, but it still is like, I don't watch the show. So you're limiting your audience right off the bat. So um, if you look at, I mean, Sex and the City did well, but Entourage didn't. Uh, It was, plus it was past when it really should have been. But I think when you make a TV show into a film, you're instantly making your audience smaller. And I think as a film, unless it's a very, very popular series, I don't think I want to do that as a, as a studio. I think I want to have a film that I can get as many eyeballs as possible into the theater because that's where you make the most money. Because ultimately, it's a business, right? I mean, we as much as we love films, it's still a business, and these films have to make money or they're not going to make the films. And that's why we should all want these films to succeed, from from the biggest film to the smallest film, because the big films do help finance those smaller films, and maybe they'll take chances. I mean, look at the Northman. The Northman. A focus film, they spent, and the budget's anywhere from 70 to 90 million. I've heard all kinds of things. The danger of The Northman, I think the lesson of The Northman is this, and Robert Eggers certainly learned it, Focus learned it, is that when you give a filmmaker 70 to 90 million dollars to make a film, and you make a film that is more accessible than The Witch, definitely more accessible than The Lighthouse, but when you give someone that much money to make a film, you have to then, as a filmmaker, yes, you want to make the film you want to make, but you also have to understand that you've just been given a big responsibility with this cash. It's a lot of money. That you need to make a film that is more accessible to a bigger audience so that you now can get another film made. Because I think Robert Eggers even just recently said, I've learned a lesson. Well, you should have known that ahead of time. I was saying that, you know, the danger of this is that now, is Focus ever going to give 70 million to another young up and coming director? Probably not. They, they're like, we got burnt by the Northman. Um, we lost money on the Northman. I mean, I would never have given Robert Eggers 70 million to make the Northman. There's no chance. I, I can't even believe that happened. Um, and I value his filmmaking, but I also understand that the films that Robert Eggers make are is not a wide audience, a wide scoped movie. It's a very, again, more of a niche. And Northman is wider, but it's not as wide as it should be. And I think that's that's the the lesson of the Northman is that with great power comes great responsibility. And they gave him an opportunity to succeed with this massive budget, and he delivered a film that underperformed. And it comes back to uh, the director and the choices that he made in the film. It's a fine film. It's not a bad film, but it could have been more accessible. Um, and I know that's probably not what he wanted to do, but again, he's not going to get that opportunity again anytime soon. I think you've said we need more family films yep. for theatrical. Mm-hmm. Why is that? Well, family films, um, or I mean, again, I just go back to my childhood, going to films with my family, uh, going to see Richard Donner's Superman. I'll never forget that with my friend and his family. It's just like that, it's ingrained forever. I, I, just right now, I have not thought about it until this moment. But going to films with your family. I took my kids when they were young to so many films. When we lived in Boston, I was, I was doing TV there. And we went to see, like, no joke, two movies a week. And there were so many family films. Huge, uh, hugely popular time for animated films. The early 2010s, you had so many of them. Like, literally one a month. And I took them to all of them. But family films are really the bedrock because it drives people into the theater um, as a group, right? Four or more, heck, maybe your family's two. Whatever the number is, it's a larger group of people going to see the movie and they're going in and supporting cinema, which again flows down with the success. You're going to have studios having more money and take more chances on films. I think that's why we want all these films to succeed. But family films are really the bedrock of that. So go back to Marvel. Marvel is the bedrock of cinema right now, ultimately, whether you like it or not. We want these films to succeed because it drives people in. You may not like them, but you need to appreciate what they, the value of a MCU film and DCEU. You need to appreciate that when these films succeed, it's good for the entire cinema ecosystem. And I think that is where some people get lost. They want to see these films fail. I never want to see a film fail, ever, because it's bad, like The Northman. I, it, no one wants to see that film fail because I want to see someone else be given $70 million to make an independent film. 
Uh, you know, even though The Northman still an independent film, but a big film. Rose Glass. I mean, God, if I could give Rose Glass fifty million to make a film, I would trust her to make a badass film. Um, you know, Saint Maud is just. I mean, it's just one of those experiences you just go, wow, this is talent. Um, but but it really comes back to really you want to see everything succeed because it benefits everyone. So never root against a film ever. Do you really think there are people rooting against mm-hmm. something? Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, I see it on I see it online all the time. You, if you say if you say you don't like an MCU film, the, then the MCU people say, "Oh, you're a DCEU guy." And then conversely, the other way, "I love DCEU." Or you hate MCU. No, I don't have a dog in the fight. I really am just again neutral. Watching the film, does it work? Does it not? I don't even care what the label is. We got to get away from all that. You can't. It doesn't matter. Um, you just want to see a good quality film. And it doesn't matter what brand a comic it comes from, what studio, what distributor, none of that stuff matters. It's the film ultimately. So you need to get less into these tribalistic thoughts. It doesn't make sense to me. Uh, I'm definitely not tribalistic. I think everyone needs to become less tribal. It, it's become your own thinker, right? Don't, don't follow everybody else unless it's the right thing to do. But if it, but think about it, make, make your own critical decisions. And I think that's ultimately what we, the job we have as a film critic, film evaluator is to be absolutely unbiased and try to see the film as neutrally as possible so that when you say something's good and bad, um, you, you have that value that your words stand for something.